Hello, everyone. My name is Wei Tianqian. I'm a PhD student of the National University of Singapore. Today, I'm very glad to present my paper on mythical sage rulers in the Zhuangzi and Guo Xiang's commentary. In this presentation, I will discuss the fictional images of sage kings, such as the Yellow Emperor Yao, Shun, and Yu, depicted in the Zhuangzi, and compare them with those in Guo Xiang's commentary on the Zhuangzi. I will discuss three main issues. First, the connection between Sage King's governance and virtual degeneration of the world over time. Second, the comparison of virtues of different Sage Kings. Third, the root cause of chaos and its remedy. The fundamental question is, should there be a Sage or no Sage? The ideal world of perfect virtue described in the outer chapters of the Zhuangzi, refer to ancient times when people had no idea of benevolence, righteousness, or sagehood. Over time, the ancient world of perfect virtue developed into the chaos in Xia, Shang, and Zhou dynasties through a process of virtue degeneration. Virtue, or De in Chinese, is a key concept in the Zhuangzi. It concerns with not only preserving one's inborn nature, but also preserving the political orders of the world. One might wonder that how could virtue degenerate in the first place? And an answer was indeed offered in the Zhuangzi. The Mati chapter states that it was the fault of the sage, Sheng Ren, that the way and its virtue were destroyed in order to promote benevolence and righteousness, Ren Yi. Here, the sage in this chapter does not refer to any specific historical figure. In contrast, the Zaiyu chapter states that benevolence and righteousness was first used by the Yellow Emperor to govern, and Yao and Shun followed suit. Then in the Tianmu, Tianmu chapter states that ever since Yu Shun began preaching Ren Yi and stirring up the world, all men in the world altered their inborn nature and dashed headlong for Ren Yi. The Tiandi chapter states that the degeneration of virtue and disorder of the world began under the governance of Yu, who implemented reward and punishment on people. We could see that there is a common view in the outer chapters of the Zhuangzi. It claims that the virtual degeneration of the world is caused by the governance of the so-called sage kings who promote benevolence and righteousness and impose rewards and punishments on people. Consequently, this leads to the loss of people's inborn nature. Although different chapters of the Zhuangzi point at a different sage king who starts off the process of virtual degeneration, the identity of sage king is not that crucial as the stories of the sage kings were meant to be allegorical. Whether the guilty sage king referred to the Yellow Emperor, Yao, Shun, or Yu, the point was to criticize the governance of sage kings. Despite, despite the abundant criticism of sage kings in the Zhuangzi, Guo Xiang's commentary views the Yellow Emperor, Yao, Shun, and Yu themselves as sages with true virtues. He argues that Zhuangzi's criticism of sage kings actually referred to the traces C, of their spiritual virtue rather than their spiritual virtue itself. Sages were not mindful in doing things with Ren Yi, but traces of Ren Yi were inevitably left behind. So Guo Xiang think, uh, in Guo Xiang's opinion, the real prob problem is that as people began to imitate the sages in the past, by following their traces, the inner power of their true self was lost. Guo Xiang's interpretation attributes the cause of virtue degeneration to the fault of trace followers who imitated the sages instead of the sage rulers themselves. In the Zhuangzi, there are some cases in which the virtues of different sage kings are compared. Several conversations between Yao and, Yu, uh, Yao and Shun in different chapters of the Zhuangzi seem to reveal that the virtue of Yao cannot be compared with that of Shun. 
In the Tiandao chapter, Yao is described as the one who joins with man, whereas Shun is described as the one who joins with heaven. Of course, in the grand scheme of Zhuangzi's philosophy, heaven takes precedence over man. In the Qi Wu Lun chapter, Yao is bothered by the fact that there are three small neighboring states that have yet to fall under his rulership, and he asked Shun about conquering them. In reply, Shun used the analogy of ten cents to help him visualize the great virtue of lighting up all things under heaven. For Guo Xiang, the virtues of Yao and Shun are indeed identical. Yao is not inferior to Shun. Zhuangzi only made Yao ask that question in order to bring out the idea that virtue of sage kings is capable of nurturing the nature of all, all beings. Here is another case in which Yao's virtue is compared with Yu. In the Tiandi chapter, when Yao ruled the world, Bo Chang Gao was enfeffed as one of his noblemen. But when Yu ruled the world, Zi Gao relinquished his title and took up farming. Yu asked him for the reason, and Zi Gao said that, in former times when Yao ruled the world, he handed out no rewards, and yet people worked hard. He handed out no punishments, and yet people were cautious. Now you reward and punish, and still the people fail to do good. From now on, virtue will degenerate. From now on, penalties will prevail. The disorders of future ages will have its beginning here. Literally, Zi Gao praised Yao for governing without intervention and blamed Yu for governing with actions of giving rewards and punishments, which would initiate virtue degeneration. In Guo Xiang's interpretation, the purpose of this fictional account is not to praise Yao and criticize Yu. Um, this is the text of his commentary in the Tiandi chapter. Contrary to Zi Gao, Guo Xiang considered Yu's rulership to be the best as it continued the legacy of Yao and Shun. Indeed, the virtue of all under heaven need to be nurtured continuously over time. Guo Xiang argued that in terms of personal character, Yao, Shun, and Yu are actually as good as one with unique virtue but different names. The names of the sages vary with time and generations, but the true virtue of the sage is ineffable. So Guo Xiang interpreted the comparisons and criticisms on sage kings in the Zhuangzi in terms of their names, Ming, and traces, Ji, only. The name of a sage can only signify the traces of his virtue, but not his virtue itself. So what is the true virtue of a sage? And how does it come from? Guo Xiang introduced the idea of no mind, Wu Xin, to explain that the true nature of virtue is self so zi ran, which means things being themselves without any intention to be so. A true sage does not use his heart mind to intervene in the natures of beings, including himself. In this sense, the sage is characterized as having no mind. Now we come to the fundamental question, should there be a sage or not? Let's examine the view in the Zhuangzi, followed by Guo Xiang's commentary. There is a common opinion in the Zhuangzi that attributes the root cause of chaos in the world to the fault of the sage who governed with wisdom. For example, in the Xu Qie chapter, it claims that until the sage is dead, great thieves will never cease to appear. When a great thief steals a state, he also steals the laws which the wisdom of sages have had devised so that he can rest as peacefully as a Yao or a Shun. It proposes that the only remedy to restore order and peace to the world is to abandon sageliness and cast away wisdom. In Chinese, it is called Jue Sheng Qi Zhi. And Guo Xiang interpreted Jue Sheng Qi Zhi to mean that forgetting about the traces of the sage in the past rather than the true virtue of the sage itself. Guo Xiang claims that 
the root cause of virtual degeneration and chaos in the world is having no sage. In his commentary to the Shanxing chapter, he said, the reason why virtue became degenerated was that the sage could not succeed one another generation after generation. So the ruler above could not abide by non-action, wu wei, but admired the traces of non-action. Hence, such a malady ensued. In Guo Xiang's opinion, the root cause of virtual degeneration of the world is not Sage King's governance, but rather the Sage does not continue to appear over time. Thus, it implies that as time goes on, the change from the generation under a Sage King to another generation without a Sage King would sever the legacy of Sagely virtue, unlike the continuous succession of rulership of Yao, Shun, and Yu over three consecutive genera generations. If the ruler is only a king in name without having the true virtue of no mind or non-action, he will aspire to follow the traces of previous sage kings. The actions or interference by the, by the ruler would speed up the process of virtual degeneration. Therefore, the continuity in the governance of sage kings is critical to the nurturance of true virtue. Wu Xiang believed that only the, the only remedy to restore true virtue and the order of the world is to help a sage king who embodied no mind. He said, the minds, the minds all differ in the world. Only a person of no mind can be lord. This is because the multitude have different minds because everyone's heart mind is filled with desires to strive for their own interests. Only when the sage of no mind becomes a lord can the inborn nature of all beings be respected and nurtured. Wu Xiang insisted, insisted that there must be one and only one sage ruler who embodies no mind, because only such a person is able to ensure the self-soul and harmony of all beings without highlighting own virtue or wisdom for emulation. It is one thing to, propo to propose that the sage king of no mind should be the king, but it is quite another thing to find such a sage and to ensure the continuous legacy of sage kings. Wu Xiang was evidently aware of this, but he only pointed out that this is beyond the capability of man, including the sage himself. He said, the sage can only leave the world alone to find one on its own. How can he cause the world to find a sage? So for Gu Xiang, all beings in the world, including the sage himself, can only be self so without knowing why and how it is so. Even a sage has no way to find another sage for the world. He can only leave things alone to be self so Therefore, whether there is a sage or no sage in the world, it is all a matter of self soul. In other words, whether the world is in order or in chaos, whether true, whether true virtue degenerates or flourishes, it cannot be influenced by the wisdom of humans. Thus, he suggested that rather than worry about the degeneration of virtue or the absence of a sage in the world, it is better to forget about it or, sim or simply let it be. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.